The Amazon is the largest rainforest on the face of the Earth, spanning eight countries and representing an area twice the size of India, or roughly 28 times the size of the UK. Besides a fascinating history, this huge untamed wilderness is home to as many as 40,000 species of plant. But I haven't yet had any of those teeth. Oh, crikey! Several thousand species of birds, over 400 mammals and 2.5 million different insects. But that's not all. From walking trees to lizards that can walk on water. Where do we even begin? 20 most shocking things found in the Amazon. Pink Dolphin In the Amazon, river dolphins can be pink, as you can see. Interestingly, while the dolphin is named after its pink color, actually when it's young, it is gray. The dolphin develops its pink color as it grows older. Some do not change too much, while others develop just pink spots. Other individuals may become a very bright pink color. They may also turn even pinker when they become excited. The color of this dolphin can depend on a variety of factors, such as diet, how much sunlight they are exposed to, and behavior, as well as placement of their capillaries, though experts are not completely sure of the factors that lead to their unusual coloration. This Amazon dolphin, also known as the Boto locally, lives only in freshwater, and they are found throughout much of the river basins in this region. Although most people are only familiar with dolphin species that live in the ocean, out of the five freshwater species of dolphins, the Pink River Dolphin is the biggest. Measuring up to 9 feet and weighing up to 400 pounds, they are incredibly curious, outgoing animals, and known to be fairly friendly with people. However, the truth is that the Bato, one of the few remaining freshwater dolphin species on Earth, is still something of an enigma. What they capture deep inside the Amazon jungle defies all logic, and what's with this unusual photo of some civilian just casually posing with some sort of Amazonian Bigfoot? Many will be familiar with tales of the Sasquatch of North America and the Yeti of the Himalayas. But have you heard of the Bigfoot of the Amazon? The vast Amazonian jungles of western Brazil and eastern Peru are said to harbor a huge monster that is wrapped in mystery and local legend. Reputed to be the wildest, rarest, most mysterious and terrifying denzian of the rainforest, nearly every indigenous tribe in these regions has a word for the creature, which can usually be translated as the roaring animal. Its most common name is the Mapinguari, but it's also known as simply Bicho, which means beast. Descriptions of the beast are also very widely. Classic stories describe it as a werewolf-like Indian shaman who discovered the secret of immortality, but paid for it by being transformed into a horrible monster. But how horrible could it be if it's willing to pose for photos with tourists? It even looks like it has a smile on its face. Comment below with hashtag open discussion and let us know what you think of this photo. Mysterious Boiling River Known by natives of the deep Amazonian forest as Shane Tempishka, the mysterious river with boiling water is located in Peru near an ancient pilgrimage area. The stream has a depth of about 20 feet and a width of about 80 feet blows for over 4 miles inside the jungle and maintains a temperature that in some areas can reach 95 degrees Celsius. This is very high degree of heat and is sufficient to kill any form of life, including humans, in a matter of minutes. Until 2011, most scholars thought that the Boiling River was just a popular legend, but they were forced to change their mind when a young Peruvian with a passion for geology decided to go in search of this mysterious place. He managed to find the Boiling River, proving that the river that kills really exists. It also led to a discovery of the existence of a torturous underground geothermal network capable of bringing the boiling water to resurface many miles away. The most shocking part of this discovery is that there is an absence of volcanoes in the nearby area. Rivers with waters at boiling temperatures are not unheard of, and many exist across the globe. However, they are usually found close to volcanoes. Silkenge these strange and tiny structures, each small enough to fit on a fingertip, have captivated and perplexed scientists since the first one was discovered in Peru, a tapering central cone ringed by delicate silk pillars reminiscent of Stonehenge. And the mysterious silk structure known as Silkhenge has been captured in this remarkable high-resolution new video. Video of spiderlings breaking out of the web towers revealed that these strange structures serve as protective fences around spider egg sacs, but the species of spider behind the structures has yet to be identified. 
Not only are the clever spiders still unidentified, no one has ever seen the arachnids actually make these works of art, a central tower of silk. With a fence of silk spires surrounding it, scientists were baffled, and why the arachnid would go to such enormous lengths didn't make any sense. The detail captured by the footage could theoretically help arachnologists identify the type of spider by revealing the kind of silk it spins. These graceful stalks, which form a fence around two or three eggs, could be meant to protect spider babies from parasitic wasps that prey on that species. For now, silk henge discoveries are few and far between. But each find tells researchers a little more about this mysterious spider architect. Blue Poison Dart Frog these little frogs are easily recognized by their blue color, which is generally darker on the limbs and belly and overlaid with black spots or patches, especially on the head and back. Blue poison dart frogs are active during the day and can be found hiding among boulders and debris, near streams and among leaf litter on the forest floor. However, they lack toe webbing and are poor swimmers, so they're not found in the water. These frogs are carnivorous and survive on a diet of small insects, including fruit flies, termites, ants, young crickets, and some smaller species of beetles. They're excellent opportunistic hunters, relying on their long, sticky tongues to flash out and catch fast-moving prey in the blink of an eye. But no matter what you do, never touch them. As their name implies, poison dart frogs can release toxins from the skin that are distasteful and potentially lethal to would-be predators. The frog's poison is found in their skin, making them too toxic to even touch. A single specimen measuring two inches has enough venom to kill ten grown men. The indigenous people of the Amazon have used its powerful venom for centuries to tip their blowgun darts when hunting, hence the species name. Still, despite its poisonous ways, blue poison frogs are known as the jewels of the rainforest. Rock art Recently, a team of archaeologists discovered tens of thousands of perfectly preserved cave paintings in an eight-mile stretch of cliff deep within the Amazon forest. The cave paintings, dating back around 12,000 years, feature images of various animals, including long extinct ones, such as giant sloths, camelids, and mastodons. Some people have even nicknamed the newly found the Sistine Chapel of the Ancients. The images were produced by the earliest people to live in western Amazonia. According to the experts, the paintings show how these early humans hunted, farmed, fished, and reconstructed the land. It is likely art was a powerful part of culture and a way for people to connect socially. The pictures show how people would have lived amongst giant, now-extinct animals which they hunted. Their date is based partly on their depictions of now-extinct Ice Age animals, such as the Mastodon, a prehistoric relative to the elephant that hasn't roamed South America for at least 12,000 years. These animals were all seen and painted by some of the very first humans ever to reach the Amazon. Their pictures give a glimpse into a lost ancient civilization, and the sheer scale of these paintings will take generations to study. Golden Lion Tamarin Nice hairdo, right? Golden Lion Tamarins are small social Amazonian primates with a magnificent reddish gold coat and a long, backswept mane. Lion Tamarins obviously take their name from their impressive manes. Thick rings of hair reminiscent of Africa's great cats. Its abundant golden hair frames a charismatic black face and covers its small body and tail. Despite their name, these rare primates have far more in common with their monkey relatives than any feline. Still, these monkeys are cool cats for sure. Golden lion tamarins are small monkeys, weighing 17 to 24 ounces and measuring 6 to 18 inches in length, with a tail of about 12 to 15 inches. Once down to 200 individuals in the wild, intensive conservation efforts have helped the population recover. Still an endangered species, there are about 2,500 in the wild, about a third of which are descendants of golden lion tamarins raised in human care. So things are looking better for these good-looking monkeys. Golden lion tamarins live in the heavily populated Atlantic coastal regions of southeastern Brazil. They live in humid forests with many vines and occupy the closed canopy, often remaining 29 to 100 feet off the ground. Victoria Amazonica Victoria Amazonica is the world's largest water lily. This species is the national flower of the Republic of Guyana and appears on the country's coat of arms. The first discovery was in 1801 in Bolivia, and it is indigenous to the Amazon River Basin's shallow waters. The flower is famous for its enormous circular leaves, the common names for the water lily include Amazon water lily, Victoria lily, or giant water lily. 
The giant water lily has large leaves and have a diameter of up to 10 feet, which float on water, and a submerged stalk that is up to 26 feet long. The leaves start as pointy heads that expand so fast up to 5 square feet each day. Under the surface, the leaves are red and have sharp spines that defend the plant from herbivorous fish. The species' flowers are short-lived and last about 48 hours, appearing as white when it opens, initially as female. The sweet scent they emit attracts beetles, which carry pollen from other plants. After the transfer of the pollen, the flower shuts as fertilization takes place to trap the beetles inside. When the flower opens the next evening, after transforming to mature male during the day, the beetles fly to a different white flower. After this process, the flower closes up, descending below the water surface. Arapaima gigas The arapaima is the largest freshwater fish with scales in the world and can be found in the South American tropical waters of the Amazon basin. They can truly be monstrous in size. The largest recorded arapaima had a staggering weight of 440 pounds and a whopping length of almost 15 feet. Owing to overfishing, large arapaima of more than 6.6 .6 feet are seldom found in the wild today. However, there are still some monsters out there. As air breathers, arapaimas can only stay underwater for 10 to 20 minutes, and it can survive a day out of water altogether. It eats fish, but also birds, lizards, and small mammals, crushing its prey with its tooth-covered tongue. This evolutionary masterpiece has an even greater trick, its scales which researchers have compared to a bulletproof vest. The scales are so strong they can protect it from piranha attacks. This massive dinosaur fish is essentially unchanged since the Jurassic Age and is the inspiration for a local Amazonian legend. The legend speaks of an evil spirit that inhabits an enormous scaly fish, taller than a man, that is capable of leaping out of the water to knock fishermen from their boats to eat them. So believable is this legend that the fish are known as the Amazon Assassin. Tree Invading Fruit Jabuticaba If you happen across one of these trees, it might seem as if it's under attack by purple balls. Jabuticabas at a glance look almost exactly like grapes. In fact, they look so grape-like that they even have the nickname tree grapes. But unlike grapes, these little violent fruits wind up and around tree trunks, sometimes overtaking the tree completely. Jabuticaba trees are very slow growing and can take 8 to 10 years to produce their first fruits. The tree is what's known in the plant world as a coliflory, meaning that its flowers and fruits grow directly out of its trunk. They may be found in small clusters or individually up and down the trunk of the tree. Measuring on average 1 inch in diameter, the tough skin of the jabuticaba offers a tannic and resinous flavor. Within the skin is a purpley translucent white to rosy pink flesh surrounding 1 to 5 round and flat light brown seeds. These fruits are immensely popular throughout their native Brazil, where they are most commonly eaten out of hand, but are also used to make jams and wine. Unfortunately, however, they ferment shortly after being picked, so the fruits are unlikely to show up in the supermarkets outside their native range. Jesus Lizard The basilisk lizard, also known as the Jesus Lizard, is a genius of large lizards native to Mexico, Central America, and South America. There are four known classes of these lizards, all ranging in color and appearance. One of the most special qualities about these lizards is that they can run extremely fast over water before sinking, hence the moniker Jesus Lizard. All four species of this lizard share this unique quality because of their webbed feet. In fact, this lizard can run upwards of 5 feet per second for nearly 15 feet before it eventually sinks into the water and begins to swim. The basilisk speed isn't the only thing that makes it skid across the water. Its uniquely formed feet are what really allow this lizard to do the unspeakable. Basilisk lizards have special toes on their rear feet. These long toes have fringes of skin-like scales that spread out in the water to increase the surface area of the foot making contact with the water. When they run on water, they pump their legs rapidly slapping their feet hard against the water. This action creates tiny pockets of air that keep them suspended on top of the water, as long as they maintain a fast pace. Eventually, gravity will take over though. Green Anaconda This anaconda can exceed 25 feet long and weigh more than 400 pounds. The green anaconda is a constrictor snake of the boa family endemic from the tropical rivers of South America. Of all the snakes, this one has the highest weight and is perhaps the largest known snake. The anaconda is a dark green in color, with oval black spots and ochre on the flanks. 
and the end of the tail shows yellow and black designs that are unique to each one. The body is broad and muscular, adapted to kill their prey by constriction. The head is narrow, and the nostrils and eyes are in an elevated position to make breathing and perception easier during the long periods that the anaconda spends submerged. Their powerful muscles make them skillful swimmers. It can travel short distances underwater or on the surface very quickly, where it's capable of reaching a speed of 20 feet per second. The anaconda travel on the rivers, but prefer the still waters such as ponds, where most of the time is immersed to stalk their prey, usually hunting animals that come to drink. It traps them with its jaws and simultaneously wraps itself around its body to suffocate them. With its immense constrictive force, these snakes can kill prey in about 10 seconds. Ancient Settlements The array of intricate settlements were detected in the savanna forest in Bolivia, the cities which were built by the indigenous communities between AD 500 and 1400, feature an array of elaborate structures quite unlike any previously discovered in the region. They include 16 feet high terraces that span some 22 acres, civic ceremonial structures and conical pyramids, each around 69 feet tall. The researchers also detected traces of a vast network of reservoirs, causeways, and checkpoints that spanned many miles. According to the archaeologists, the scale of the planning and labor that would have been needed to construct the settlements has no known precedent. These mysterious mounds in the southwest corner of the Amazon basin were once the site of ancient urban settlements. Using a remote sensing technology to map the terrain from the air, they found that starting about 1500 years ago, ancient Amazonians built and lived in densely populated centers like this. This is the first clear evidence that there were urban societies in this part of the Amazon basin. The Amazon, long thought to have been pristine wilderness before the arrival of the Europeans, was home to advanced societies well before that. Walking Palm Tree Trees, as you well know, are pretty stationary. They stay more or less where you plant them. And no one wonders about finding a tree wandering around a park or backyard. There is one unique exception. Some say the so-called walking palm tree. Found in the rainforests of Central and South America, the tree slowly walks from shade to sunlight by growing new roots toward the light and allowing the old roots, interfering with its wanderlust, to die. Many people believe it can literally walk around. This is because of its unusual root system. While most trees have one trunk, the palm splits into many smaller roots a few feet off the ground, giving it the appearance of many little legs. The amazing ambulatory ability of the walking tree has been told by rainforest guides to tourists for years, and appears in many sources as an amazing plant adaptation. They must compete with the neighboring trees in the forest that crowd in on them for two things essential to plant life nutrient providing soil or biomass, and sunlight. Scientists soon began to realize that the walking palm employs a method for moving on when the soil is stripped of its meager nutrients. By producing new aerial roots, the walking palm is able to very slowly relocate to another part of the forest floor with better conditions for life. The Goliath Tarantula The Goliath, bird-eating spider of the Amazon, is one of the largest spiders in the world, and as the name suggests, it is well capable of eating small birds of the rainforest. Widely known as the giant bird-eater and giant tarantula, it gets the name giant and goliath due to its sheer size. Native to the rainforest in northern South America, the goliath bird-eater lives in burrows or beneath rocks and roots. It's an ambush predator, meaning that normally it lies in wait for prey to cross its path, rather than hunting food down. Mother Nature has also rewarded the dinner plate-sized spider with venom. It has inch-long hollow fangs at the entrance of its mouth, which are connected to venom glands. Nocturnal, this tarantula emerges from its burrow at night, often feasting upon other invertebrates such as earthworms and beetles and toads. It also eats small rodents, bats, snakes, and lizards. Although venomous with inch-long fangs, the goliath bird-eater's bite will not kill a person. It will, however, hurt quite a bit, and has been described as somewhere between the pain of a wasp sting and hammering a nail into your hand. However, the spider is not a threat to humans unless it is threatened or disturbed. The Hotzen It's certainly a fascinating bird. The words that best describe this bird is a phoenix crossed with a dinosaur. With their lumpish bodies and spiked crests and blue faces, they can be seen squatting in the foliage of the Amazon in South America, making chuffing noises. But don't get too close, not because it's dangerous or anything, it just smells really bad. The bird is often referred to as the stink bird, 
And the reason why it smells so bad brings up the first point about how this is a bird like no other. A cow's digestive system is constituted by a number of different stomachs that merely hold leaves and grass until bacteria within its gut convert them all. The bacteria that convert this biomass into nutrition release methane in the process that the cow will later belch. The Hotsin is the only bird that also has this digestive system. Methane is also a very foul-smelling gas, and this is what got the bird this signature descriptive trait. It's also because of this that the Hotsin gets its entire diet from eating leaves, while other birds typically require the consumption of some form of meat or fruit. A meal takes up to 45 hours to pass through their systems. This is why these birds loaf around for up to 80% of the time, smelling terrible the whole time. Black Cayman Black caimans look similar to alligators and crocodiles. The family tree is quite intertwined, but according to recent research, the caiman is more similar to alligators than crocodiles. And they are huge. They are the biggest in the caiman family. They reach up to 17 feet long, with females being slightly smaller than males and being about 10 feet long. Typically, they weigh around 800 pounds, but can get as big as 1,000 pounds. When they lay their clutches of up to 60 hard-shelled eggs, the eggs weigh up to 5 ounces each, about the weight of a baseball. They love to be warm. Black caimans keep warm by basking in the sun and letting their dark scales soak up the sun. They will even stand with their mouths wide open, as if saying, ah, it feels so good. The dark water they swim in also helps them to soak up as much sun as possible. But you don't want to get too close. While black caimans aren't the most aggressive member of the crocodile, caiman, and alligator family, you shouldn't try to touch one. These are wild animals, and they can be very territorial, especially if they have a nest and eggs nearby. While you shouldn't be terrified of these animals, they have been known to attack over 80 people in the last 20 years. Reflesia flower with the largest flower in the world and an obnoxious smell of rotten flesh. The Reflesia is also known as the corpse flower plant, and it is unique in every way possible. This plant is a complete parasite lacking roots, stems, and leaves of any kind, but lives attached to its host plant. The main body of the plant consisting of thread-like strands of tissue is completely embedded within the host tissues. The flowers themselves are as large as 3 feet in diameter, when ready to reproduce, the Reflesia generates maroon or magenta colored buds that develop over a period of a year into a large cabbage shaped size and finally blooms to form the gigantic flower. The foul, rotten flesh type of smell attracts feeding flies. Though the flies receive no benefits from the flower, when they sit on the flower attracted by its smell, the pollen sticks to their backs. When these flies move to a female flower, they deposit the pollen on these flowers, allowing fertilization to occur. The fruits produced are small and fleshy, with thousands of seeds. These fruits are consumed by tree shrews, who then help disperse the seeds of the plant. It is rare and fairly hard to locate as the buds take many months to develop, and the flower lasts just for a few days. Potu Masters of disguise, potu birds are only active at night, and thus sleep during the day. Not only do their bugged out eyes help the birds see efficiently in the dark, but they can locate a tiny insect from a far distance away. This makes the potu a very talented hunter. Its big eyes make it look almost like a puppet, a creation from a Jim Henson movie. The potu is certainly a one of a kind in the animal world, sometimes called poor me ones. After their haunting calls, they are also known to be extremely vocal. You're probably used to waking up to birds chirping merrily in the morning, but the potu's call is different. It's less of a chirp and more like a weird shout. The potu cries for the moon. According to legend, the bird's call is the mournful lament of a spirit in love with a distant spirit of the moon. However, the potu is known for its camouflage, which it uses as a defense against local predators. It looks identical to a tree branch or a piece of wood, and unless predators know exactly what they're looking for, potus can easily deceive them. Although potu birds have small beaks, their mouths are huge. Their wide, large mouths help them catch moths, beetles, and other insects during the night. Bullet Ant It may be only an inch long, but the bullet ant has an excruciating sting that leaves victims in agony, including temporary paralysis and hallucinations. Sometimes called the 24-hour ant or conga ant, its sting can deliver a positively gargantuan amount of pain. Those who have had the severe misfortune of being stung by this tiny rainforest creature say the pain is unequal to anything else on Earth. 
What's more, a group of indigenous Brazilians native to the state of Amazonas uses the sting in an important initiation rite for their most fearsome warriors. A native group of Amazonians who live in what is today Brazil are not only known for their use of the bullet and venom in the initiation rites for young men coming of age. Tribe members first soak the critters in a natural sedative, rendering them unconscious. The ants are then woven into gloves made of leaves and placed into the hands of boys as young as age 12, with the stingers facing inwards. What happens next is perhaps predictable. The ants wake up, madder than haters, and proceed to sting the unfortunate souls. Muscle spasms, disorientation, and even hallucinations tend to follow. But young warriors don't experience this agonizing ritual just once. They must go through the ceremony 20 times before they're fully considered adults. Electric Eel Found in the Amazon rivers, instead of biting or stinging their prey, these creatures release up to 600 volts of electricity. This is the electric eel. What would happen if you encountered one? Or how about a pool full of them? If you're hoping to jump into a pool full of electric eels, you might not have a chance to get into the water. That's because if the eels see you standing outside the pool, they might jump out and shock you. That's right. When electric eels see a threat, they're able to jump up and zap you. This packs an even greater punch than they would have while in the water. Although electric eels don't hunt humans and aren't something we should be afraid of in our daily lives, they will definitely shock you if they think you're a threat, or something they could eat. As soon as you enter the water, the fish will let out an electric discharge. It does this by using three electric organs within its body. These organs contain electrolytes, and the eel uses them to navigate and communicate as well as shock its prey. The first electric shock is used to locate you. Once that happens and the eel spots you, the eel will release a second electric shock. If the shock were to come from a full-sized adult, it would be equal to 600 volts of electricity. If you survive with shocks like these, you'd still experience the effects months if not years later. See? There's more to the Amazon region than meets the eye. These videos show you many different sides to this powerful place. But we can't help but be hungry for more. So, like and subscribe if you're as hungry as we are.